Coach, just uh, where's your confidence level with where you think the defense is at going into obviously week one against, against Houston? What was kind of that ceiling or, or area that you wanted to meet? Was there, yeah. was there a way that you could tell me? Yeah, I, I think still, I, 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 I think the measuring stick is coming out of fall camp the first game uh, to really get a good indication of where you are uh, and really what you can become. Uh, I like what I've seen, you know, obviously through spring football. Uh, I like the way the guys trained this summer. Uh, I, like the, I like what we were able to do this uh, during fall camp. Uh, but I really think that the test for all that, all that preparation, it's like taking, you know, a nine weeks exam and uh, here you go. It, it's here right in front of us. So I, I'm just as excited to watch these guys play as everyone else. So, you know, it's a player's game. Uh, players play and they make plays and perform. And, uh, you know, we, we've done uh, a nice job in, in teaching and demanding and, and uh, raising the level and, and the expectations we have for them. And they've done a nice job meeting. Obviously, one of the guys I think that stood out when we saw that first depth chart was the fact that Reggie was able to come in no spring, just in fall, and able to earn one of those starting spots. How hard is, is accomplishing what he was able to do? Well, it, it speaks to, I mean, the young man started 13 games as a freshman at Wisconsin and played in a Big Ten championship game against Ohio State. So there's not a moment that's too big for him. I mean, he is uh, he's played at, a, at an elite level already, uh, and he just he just came in and you know had such a belief in himself, uh, you know, and also getting an opportunity again that, that uh, he wasn't sure was even going to be a reality. So I, I just think that you know. He has a very high standard that he sets for himself. And uh, he, he was able to just come in with great confidence, pick the scheme up like it was nothing, and uh, has done, you know, he continues to learn, you know, some of the details and things like that, but uh, been very impressed with, with what he's been able to accomplish to this point. On, kind of on that same subject of all the transfer guys, obviously they bring a lot and they have a ton of experience, but considering that you have one guy from here, one guy from here, one guy from out there. Um, how cohesive is it so far? Is there any concern about yeah, that? That's a good question. Uh, this is by far the most. Uh, see, when you when you recruit people who are like minded, uh, see, it's hard to uh, to develop that. You got to recruit it. So there, we're we're very thorough whenever we do look for people. There, there has to be common denominators among those people that we're recruiting. This is by far the closest football team that we've had uh, since I've been here. And I, I like what you're saying because that from the outside looking in, you think, man, you've got people coming in from everywhere, UCLA, Wisconsin, uh, North Carolina State, uh, Oregon, you know, but it's when they all have the same type characteristics. You look at Tyler Shuck, guy's got two degrees. Uh, you look at Reggie Pearson, Reggie Pearson's a great student. I mean, we look at their families, you know, they, they kind of fit the mold of a Zach McPherson, you know, so we just try to follow that mold and that pattern of what we look for. And sometimes it's the intangibles that we're looking for, not just what they do on the field, academics, the type home life they come from, you know, things like that. Like, so we've been really good to this point in developing that chemistry. And, you know, a lot of times too, when you when you strain people, you know, uh, I, I believe in straining guys uh, in practice, you know, mentally, physically, and that creates a bond. When they can sit there and you strain them together, now they have no choice but to pull together. And then you incorporate the the pillars in which we build our program on discipline and trust, you build those things and all of a sudden you have chemistry. And the, I, I, like, I use the term chemistry. Uh, it is almost like balancing equ an equation. You can't just take someone because they're talented. There has to be certain things that you look for to make sure they fit into what we what we believe in as a program. And you've coached obviously for a long time. You've been a high school coach, coached in college for a long time. Have you been more receptive now to adding guys like that as opposed to the traditional way of 20, yeah. 20 high school guys? Well, you know, and that, that's what, it's hard to explain, but the recruiting calendar, technically during an evaluation period, we I think it's been uh, 
uh, spring of 2019 since we left campus. It's hard to recruit high school you know, players whenever you don't really truly evaluate. And I'm talking about being able to walk into a counselor's office, be able to walk in and visit with an English teacher or a history professor, sit down and visit with a coaching staff. Uh, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. Like, I mean, the, there, there's young men that, that are here in town. I, I, uh, they're carrying my groceries out at uh, United. I'm asking them, hey, tell me about this kid from such and such high school. Oh yeah, I know him. Is he a good guy? I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. And when you can't leave campus and you just watch a video or a highlight video, it's easy to miss and not necessarily miss on the talent. You could easily miss on some of those those intangibles that you look for. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into recruiting. Uh, am I, I am more open to it, you know, uh, just because of the nature of our location. It's hard for players to get here after a Friday night game for an 11 o'clock kickoff if they have any kind of obligation with their high school program on Saturday morning, which a lot of them come in and lift and watch the film and try to get here for an 11 o'clock or a noon game. I'm not making excuses, but it's just, it's a lot easier to get to Dallas or Fort Worth or Waco or, you know, so that's just a reality. Uh, so I, I'm a little bit more open to uh, continuing to stay old and, uh, but also develop because we're a developmental program as well. We're developing those young guys as well. I mean, you got Josiah Pierre, four years, uh, uh, Malik Dunlap, three years, Jazzy, three years. So we've got these guys, we've done a nice job bringing the guys with multiple years of experience, so it still gives us time to develop them, uh, but also uh, they're older. I mean, this is uh, Josiah Pierre's third year of college. He's, he's already into his third year and he's a freshman. In terms of uh, when, you're, when you're trying to scout a week one opponent, does it make it any easier when one of their starting wide receivers you can go to the cornerback unit and be like, I mean, you've seen him, Physically, like you, you guard him one on one in practice before you know what he does, what he likes to do. Does it make it any easier? You know, I, this I know this probably sounds uh, like a coach cliche, but I the first game to me is all about you. It, it's focusing on what you do. It's about making having sound, simple adjustments during because people sit all spring long, they sit all summer long, and they evaluate their tendencies, and they're gonna do things that first game that probably don't resemble what they did a year ago. So I don't put a lot of stock in, in uh, obviously you watch it, you evaluate it, but I don't put a lot of stock into that, that's what they're gonna do game one. Uh, you know, every offense has uh, principles and concepts and, and things that they believe in, uh, but it doesn't mean that necessarily uh, that's, you know, it's going to look exactly what, like it, what it did a year before. So I just make sure that we're sound in a lot of different areas, okay? make sure that we're ready for a lot of different uh, types of attacks, uh, whether it be personnel groupings, whether it be, uh, you know, formation structures, whether it be, you know, a lot of things. I just try to make sure that we have a sound uh, scheme under our belt. Got time for about two more. What are, what are some things Houston does well on offense and some areas y'all look to take away on Saturday? Well, you know, obviously, you know, Dana's comes from uh, the, you know, air raid tree, and so they obviously have a very good understanding of that. The one thing that I, I like about the way Dana's evolved as a coach, man, he's incorporated, you know, uh, a lot of misdirection with the counter and, and stuff like that in the run game, uh, which, you know, so, and then, of course, you know, a lot of people have RPO built into their system but that, that's the biggest thing I see is he's evolved that system but still has the you know the air raid uh, ability to throw the football and I just see a little bit more of a commitment to run the football uh, and uh, you know I they're, they're, they obviously know what they're doing and do it well. Has there been any sort of rise in intensity now that week one is finally here as far as practice goes you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously people are tired of going against each other. You know, we've been going against each other all spring and the whole month of August. So I think it's just natural. I, I don't think that's something. You don't have to worry about getting people fired up or inspiring them for the first game. To me, it's more about managing uh, the emotions and managing the first game week uh, and making sure that, you you know, you, you re elevate your focus and, and raise your level of mental intensity, you know, to focus on assignments and responsibilities and, and the game plan, uh, that's probably a bigger challenge than trying to get them fired up. They'll have Rico listed at Mike right now. Yeah. And yeah. He's always been a real 
Probably yeah. Right, but he's been on the edge. Yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, without just giving away too many trade secrets. I mean, it's just it, it's just a method to the madness. I mean, I, I uh, it really has to do a lot with the involvement of some of our other linebackers and the additions, right. you know, with uh, that some of those things. And I think it just creates depth. And yes, you guys saw last year. I mean, we had pretty good depth going into the season. I shoot. By the time we got the Kansas game, we're hanging on by a thread. So really, a lot of it is it has to do with just trying to create depth. He can, in other words, he can play anywhere. So you put somebody else where they're more yeah, natural. Yeah, I mean, I, I've told every NFL yeah. scout comes out there. You put a mic in his helmet. He, he's that caliber. I mean, he could play. He, he could play a lot of different positions uh, mentally. Could play almost every position on the field physically. You know. He's a linebacker, but he, he is very, very intelligent, has a very uh, good understanding of concepts in the game of football, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Coach, I guess just obviously, uh, big, uh, what's the biggest, I guess, positive or advantage to that uh, naming that starting quarterback you know, a week or so before, maybe two weeks before game time, and getting Tyler those like, uninterrupted first team? Yeah, I think the chemistry and the cohesiveness with all the receivers, I think that's the biggest thing is you're throwing the same guys now over and over and over. Um, and in every drill and every team rep, every seven on seven, every one on one. So I think those are the chemistry that you're building now, which he, he does a great job of staying after in the summer, um, really did a good job of, of the timing and the consistency and the accuracy that he has with all those receivers. So, And I think just with, with being together, I mean, there's no substitute for a group playing together. And, and that's what, you know, with him now being the name starter, being able to do that with the rest of the offensive linemen and the receivers and running backs. How does it's a good decision but from your perspective? What are you showing about him yeah. that made you confident? I think just consistency over time during fall camp. Um, the way he came in from day one and applied himself, the way he studied, um, he goes above and beyond um, off the field. Um, and, and just because you do that doesn't mean that you're the starting quarterback. I mean, he has a lot of talent. He has a lot of ability. He can throw the ball well. Um, he moves pretty well. And, and I think he understands. And he, he's a pleaser. And, and I think that um, his really attention to detail on a daily basis um, is really what separates him. Are you and he alike in that regard from, what, from, from uh, your experience as a quarterback? Yeah, he's a lot more talented, I think, naturally <laughs> than I was. Can run a lot better, can throw the ball, um, uh, gets the ball out quick. Um, he does. He studies a lot. He's in the, he's in the film room all the time. Um, he's probably one of the last to leave this facility um, and, and does all the things to check the box in terms of leadership and giving himself a chance to be very successful on Saturday. And that's kind of a uh, – I would think that's kind of a tricky situation to navigate, to walk in the door and you already have this reputation and mm -hmm. – um, you're in with a whole bunch of guys that you don't know, and, and, and you're su and, and you're su supposed to be supposed to be the leader. Mm -hmm. kind of, there could obviously be some guys who are a little bit jealous of that, right? Yeah, I, I think that the, the the overall I guess mindset of our team is we just want to win, and whoever gives us the best chance to win, whether he's been here two years, whether he's been here two weeks, as long as he. Does, is all he can to give our, our team the best chance to win. And I think Tyler handled it great in terms of that stuff. Came in, flew under the radar, um, and just handled his business. Um, he, he wasn't by any means um, a coach. He just kept to himself. Um, he did a good job of integrating himself with our players off the field as well as on. And I think he just let his actions speak. And I think when you come into a new situation, that speaks more volumes than anything you could say verbally. Your actions and my language and what you think about all your teammates, and I think he presents that well. At the running back position, obviously, you know, for Roger Cohen is going to be the one, and then there was kind of that group of guys who really could be interchangeable in ways. What did Taj and Xavier do to kind of separate themselves from the rest of the pack and connect running back? Yeah, those guys have a focus about them. I mean, if you just from, from spring practice, since the time I've been here, and that's really all I can base it on with any of these players the time that I've been here and, and my interactions and coaching, they've been so focused and driven, determined, um, locked in in weight workouts in the spring and the summer, um, and, and just uh, just a real determined, powerful group. And so I think consistent is a word that pops in my mind with both of them in terms of pass pro, in terms of pass protection responsibilities, running with the football out of the backfield, and also their ability to catch the ball and make people miss. So those guys have been very consistent, um, very powerful with the football, um, and, and 
they, there again, with their actions, speak that they really care a lot about this team. What's the uh, overall message to the offense that you're telling them here in week one as you're facing your first opponent? What's the overall message that you're telling everybody to get ready? You know, I think in, in the first game of the season, you know, there's there's emotion. Um, there's guys that, you know, we've all been waiting a long time to play this game. Um, but but I just talked to them about referring back to we all, you have to practice well. Um, you have to practice with great attention to detail. You have to practice with great enthusiasm, pad level, finishing on the perimeter, ball security, ball placement, and all those things that if you practice that way, the playing part's easy. Um, you know, there's a lot more people watching. Um, you're a little bit, you're a lot more juiced up, but your training is what it's all about. The preparation every single day in meetings and our walkthroughs and then also out in the practice field, all those things are valuable. And so that's what I just rely on that. Rely on your training. I talked to them all the time. I said, you know, the, the pre-snap, post-snap, it doesn't change whether we're in the indoor, whether we're in Jones, whether we're in NRG, whether we're out here at Mon uh, uh, Love of Monterey practicing. I mean, all those things don't change. The surroundings around you may change, but your, your pre-snap, your post-snap, decision-making, and, and, and your responsibilities, they don't change. So are you going to be sideline or booth? I'll be in the press box, yeah. And yeah, I'll be up in the press box, so. Uh, during your seven years at TCU, where were you normally? I was in the box for four. And then actually for five, and then on the sideline for two. Yeah, on the box for five and sideline for two. Is that your preference? Or yeah, the, 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 the thing that I went on the sideline a couple of years because we were young at quarterback, and I just felt like being able to be there and to, to have that eye to eye contact and just be able to communicate um, with the young quarterback and just kind of keep him, I guess, settled. When you evaluate Houston, what do you view as kind of some of the strengths of their defense and areas y'all look to exploit on, on Saturday night? Yeah, their defense is, you know, eight, eight returning starters. Um, their defensive front is very active. Um, they, they get to the quarterback. Um, their defensive ends, they like to rush upfield. Um, linebackers, you know, number three, they were a different defense, you know, when number three um, got hurt. And, and so their linebackers, their front, um, their corners, obviously are really good players. I think they trust them a lot in coverage. And, and so, you know, there, there's not a lot of weaknesses when you look at their defense. Um, their safeties have played a lot of football. Um, and, and you anticipate kind of a little bit, all right, who's going to be out there based off of what you've seen from, you know, last season. And, uh, but their defensive front, very active, very, very active. And linebackers, I think, um, are the heart and soul of their defense. Coach, is there an area when you're, you know, preparing for your first game against somebody else with a new offense that you just put in. Is there something that keeps you up at night that within the first 10 or 15 minutes your mind can be put at ease on Saturday? Yeah, there's a lot of things besides the first game. I mean, I think it's every game. Um, but in particular, you're going into it a little bit, you know, when, when, uh, when you have to get up in the morning real early, you know, and, the, and there's no lights on and you're in a new hotel or something, and you just kind of stumble around, you're kind of walking around. That's what it's like a little bit in the first quarter. So as far as feeling it out, okay, are they lining up and, and four down and three down? You know, you know, you can guesstimate, but with a new defensive coordinator, um, you know, you don't really know. And, and so um, then again, it comes to us as far as being all purpose and what we do and our kids being really confident in what we do. Got time for about two more. Considering your journey in Texas Tech, how cool is it to be part of that moment to award some scholarships? Oh, that was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. So, uh, shoot, man, these guys, especially those four, I mean, those guys are so deserving, and, and it was really neat. So um, just Coach Wells came up with that idea about midweek last week, and I was like, shoot, that's a, that's, that's a really good idea, him and Dowdy, um, pretty creative dudes. But uh, it was really cool. Um, and, and when you think about the walk-on program for Texas Tech and over the course of the history of the program, I mean, it's, you've, you've found a lot of really good players um, that have been walk-ons. And I think that's what makes this school great as well, is, 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 is it's, it's really an every man and every woman school. And, and people can come here and, and you see the success stories a lot, you know, with, with a bunch of different walk-ons that we have. And, and you just want to remind the other guys that didn't get it, like, man, there's a lot of guys that are close. And so it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, and to be able to, to do something, a small part of that, you know, because so I remember the, the presentation that I had, and it was, it was uh, not quite like that. <laughs> you, remember, you remember when you were coming from Stephenville back to Snyder one summer? Yeah. Folks on the phone? Yeah. I, think, I can't remember if you had committed there or if you had decided to come to Tech. Yeah, I committed there. You know, t Tommy Maynard was the receiver coach there at Tarleton State at the time, and then he and I worked together on the staff here with Tuberville. You know, Tommy and I are still good friends. And I told him he was the reason that I decommitted and came here. So, <laughs> well, 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 yeah. Uh, I remember you saying that Mike, the 
way he showed you around was the thing that sold right. you on tech. I yeah. told Matt that the other day, and Matt said, uh, uh, there was a girl here at tech. That, yeah, uh, yeah. No, it, it, it was, uh, it, my wife was already in school here, my girlfriend at the time, but that had a big, big part in it. The neat story is that, but, and, and I will say from being inside coaching and, and on the other side of it, um, that was, that did impact me a lot. But my wife, she was here, so that made it easier. So in recruiting, I know how that story goes. When I'm recruiting a kid and his girlfriend's in school somewhere, it's pretty much going to be a wrap. What's the biggest thing you remember, just real quick, about being a walk-on? And kind of, was there a biggest memory or a struggle that you went through that you always uh, sticks with you a little bit? I think probably what these guys experienced on Saturday, you know, as far as getting a scholarship, is, you know, then that was like your first goal that you set out to attain and you accomplished it. And so I think that was probably the biggest thing. It's, is being able to do that.